we've been doing is basically setting up a new film production during the time when all the others left the market. And like uh, Nico has explained nicely in the show before, we're seeing now a revival of the film market. And, uh, but there still are a few challenges that we have to meet um, in order to go strong into the future. And I wanted to point out a little bit about the complexity of the production and uh, also put that into the context of the market consolidation which has happened before. So we're having a revival, yes, which is very nice, but we also had a steep decline in, in the beginning. So it's not at all yet easy what, what we're doing here. And uh, then one of the reasons is also that film prices are still quite low. So. I'll just start and you're welcome to ask questions anytime, even if, if, if you see something you don't understand on a, one of my foils, then just stop me and, and ask me something. So what you see here is the main precipitation kettle, that's where we make the emulsions. And even up to today, what we're doing here, manufacturing film, is still to a certain extent a black box. This means there have been thousands, if not tens of thousands of highly skilled scientists working for decades to find out how to make a good film, how to make these grains which are light sensitive and uh, which eventually form the image. Um, but nobody can observe it because they're sensitive to light. You cannot even photograph these, um, these silver halides. There are some photographs published of silver halides um, but the people who did this had a lot of um, effort because first they had to cover the actual grain with a, with a metallic foil, with a certain procedure. Then, the, then they switched on the light to take the photograph and the grains vanished and they, then they just took the image of this foil which was still left. So nobody can see what's going on when we, when we uh, make such a film. And since 150 years it's still trial and error, like it's written on the board. It's very complex interactions of all the chemicals. We put up to 150 chemicals in the film. If it's color film, it's even more. Even small impurities can ruin entire film batches. There was a, a from, from one of my Aqua emulsionists who I took over. He, he always had this funny story that they constantly had failures in production of Aqua film and they didn't know what was the reason. And after two or three months they finally found out that one of the guys steering the kettle had changed his deodorant. And this was enough to ruin 1,000 liter of emotions. And uh, there's another nice story, well it's not nice, but it, what happened is that the cows that spent the gelatin for Kodak film, they were, um, the, this kettle was raised in Argentina and there was um, a time in the 40s where they went to different meadows and they ate a different uh, herbs. And these herbs contained a little bit of sulfur. And this sulfur ended all the way up, back up in Kodak's film gelatins and ruined films. And Kodak almost went bankrupt. So after that, they started becoming the largest farmer in Latin America because they wanted to make sure the cows do not eat these herbs anymore. Um, so, and, and another good uh, um, explanation of my thesis is that the last 20 years of R&D, I'm not talking about the last 20 years in time, because I'm talking about the last 20 years where there was heavy R&D going on in the 80s and 90s, where there were like 50, 60 companies with R&D teams doing a lot of R&D, and they invented the tabular grains, they invented J-aggregate sensitization and all these super duper hyper things. And all it got them was one f-stop, one f-stop more at a certain grain size. That's that's what they could achieve. So this is a, um, an example for the fact that this technology that we are using is really at the peak. We, the silver halide imaging system is perfected absolutely to the end. It cannot be any more perfect which in return, of course, makes it more difficult for us manufacturers to keep this level because it's so complicated. This is, um, this is unfortunately in German. 
um, it, I'm not going to go over all the, on the left side, just maybe on the right hand side. This is what all the steps of production we have to do to, um, to make it. So we have the silver nitrate, the halloids and the gelatin, we mix it with water, we stir it and then the initial precipitation takes place, which in, in one of those kettles, like I showed you on the first foil. Um, after this comes the physical ripening, which means we heat it up and then the smaller grains they coagulate with the bigger grains and they actually go up in the bigger grains, forming bigger grains. This has to be done, by, first of all, to gain speed, but also if you wouldn't do it, the process would go on over storage and the film wouldn't be unstable. And then you stiff it and um, you sediment it um, and this brings out all the liquid chemical products from the precipitation you don't want in your film anymore. Then comes the chemical ripening, where um, extra chemicals are being added. You, you um, cool it down again, you store it for a little while, you remelt it, then you add the sensitizers, and only at this point the film becomes sensitive to the entire spectrum of light. Before that, it was just sensitive to red, or even, uh, sorry, to blue, and not even to green. And it goes on and goes on, in the end you have the final product, but then you still have to expose and process it. I actually had to amend this in, in the end, not even the guy who made this forgot about this. And then you can see if you did everything right. Um, most people are probably not aware about all these um, things that film is sensitive to. Sometimes I say the only thing film is not sensitive to are bad thoughts. Uh, uh, practically it's sensitive to everything else. And we have to do it all in the dark. Um, so it's light, pressure, scratches, heat, cold, dust, radiation, bacteria, water spit, sneezing from the people working there, electrical discharge time, and many more. When you're done, you get this beautiful result. This is our, our most recent product. It's the Scala 50 slide film, which we're presenting over at our booth. And um, yeah, you gotta go through all of this. In the end, you can see at the image, look at the image, and then you can see you did everything right. In the old days, these were the type of factories producing film. You see Kodak in 1972, this is Orvo, and this is even the old Adox, which is not existing anymore. They went bankrupt in the 60s. Those were huge factories. They had more, sometimes more than 100,000 employees. And they did all this complicated stuff and produced the quality film. Now on a timeline, this is how films, film sales changed. We, we went up until about 1989, 1999, depending on who you ask, they are going to tell you maybe 2000, 2001. And then there was a steep decline where actually the market crashed uh, to an extent that within one quarter of a year, the film sales went down by 50%. And this was just a period of two, three years where almost the entire industry went bankrupt. I have the bankruptcies here on the timeline too, in, in, in the brown numbers. And it, it started to settle around 2008, 2009. And since then, we're seeing a growth again. And this is actually a good growth because it's, it's about 5 to 6% per annum. This is, this is really a lot for, for an industry. But if you compare the levels, then you see at which level are we now and which level were we before. And all the industry stock, all the buildings, the machines, everything was built for this. It was built for 900 million rolls and not for 20 million. So this is um, the problem for the big players who still stay in this business, that everything's oversized. Uh, oh, it's, no, it's doing this little... They're, they're going bankrupt. See ya. <laughs> uh, next one. Okay. So, so we decided actually already in 2004 when ACFA and, and Leverkusen went bankrupt that we have to found a new small company to grow into this residual market if we want to go on for the next 40 years. Because in our um, market economy, I don't want to say capitalistic because it's sometimes with a negative touch, but the way we organize our economies, you have to grow. You cannot just stay or even shrink. It's impossible. You can't shrink because how are you going to pay your people? And you don't want to lay them off and you can't lay them off. So 
we always need something which is growing. And that's exactly what we did at ADOS. In 2004, we started acquiring machines from ACFA, and I say telephone numbers of former employees we also acquired. So we got that, which means we have the contact to those people, and eventually we started setting up the machines and hiring them. We acquired machines from Forte in Hungary, from a Konica plant, from so many places I can't even list them here all. And five years later, we opened up our ADOX photo worker in Bazzaro and slowly started to go into the manufacturing. We did not acquire a coating machine back then because this was too complex a procedure. So we were focusing in the first five years on, on confectioning and emulsion making, R&D, recipes and human resources. So the good experts, having contacts to the experts. But we contracted out the coating. With the market further consolidating, even this step um, of coating couldn't be contracted out anymore. So in 2014, we acquired a small coating machine in Switzerland when Ilford, the, the, the Ilford branch in Switzerland, finally went bankrupt. And uh, about the same time, we also put the second building to, uh, to our uh, building in Bazzaro because we were already full and we didn't know how to expand any further. And this is actually a very interesting year for us because we're bringing this year the first silver halide product which we make entirely in-house to the market. It's the Forte Poly Warm Tone paper. We have been working for 10 years on the revival of this, of, of this product. It was so complicated. And with the new options we have in coding in Switzerland, now we can finally um, bring it to the market. And in the second quarter of, of this year, we will be mostly busy with scaling up the chemical production because of the problems Nico mentioned at, at Tetinals. They, they uh, went bankrupt uh, last year and nobody knows about the future. So I basically said already what you see here. Uh, we need small independent players to become fully operational. You, Nico also mentioned other players like Film Ferrania. They're trying similar projects. Um, However, we started 10 years earlier, so we are a little bit uh, ahead, and that's why I can make a judgment how difficult it must be for them, because they're also going for color film, which is even more complex than black and white film. We need to grow into the residual market, uh, and this is the third point is also very interesting, because we need to give young people a future in this industry. We cannot continue to work with people having been trained in the 90s or, or, or even in the 80s or, or longer ago by the old industry. We have to start uh, making this an attractive place to work for young people. And because we can, don't have so many people anymore, we also need to consolidate all those skills into, um, into less people so that this practically means everyone has to do more steps of the production. We cannot have every grip of a hand be done by a different person anymore. And this. Uh, means a lot of training. And then last step, which is kind of in with all the other, we have to transfer the know-how of the retiring generation to the younger team. And right now, really, this entire industry is retiring because nothing has happened since 2000 when, when this market went down. Everyone was just hanging on and there was no investment. So this is the last, actually, the, it's, it's five before 12 that we have to start this transition of getting the know-how of the people going to, into retirement into young people. And, and that's exactly what we're doing. This is our new building. We are compared to the other image, no? but at least we have 2,500 square meters, about 20 employees in production. So it's not nothing. It's not like 100,000, but it's something. This is our coating machine in Switzerland. Here you see the six slots. We can do six slots and one pass, so we would be able to do color film. Uh, right here we're just rehearsing, we're just doing one slot and we're just doing one coating. This is the small emulsion plant in Switzerland. It's a 60 liter scale, but it's still enough to make 20,000 films from one uh, emulsion manufacturing. The, the bigger um, um, emulsion manufacturers uh, um, we abandoned. This, is, this scale is sufficient for us. This is the small kettle, and here you see the first time Matthias, he's our young uh, chemist, he just got his doctor's degree and he's been trained since two years to become an emulsionist. Here you see him learning from the older guy, it's Jürgen, 
he's been an emotionist for uh, 40 years, but he's already retired and he's been hanging on for us for another three years to train the young generation. This is our new lab technician Nina and she's learning how to hand code. That's another thing, we have to take the complexity out. The old factory had coating teams and coating machines just for research coating. And this is what this was way too difficult. So we scale everything down, and we go as uh, as low tech as possible uh, in in the production process, so we can sustain it with the current market. This is our confectioning. This is, this has been running for ten years, so that's what we've been doing for for quite a while now. We're quite good at confectioning. Send us a master roll. We break it down. We make films for you. This is our new chemical building, I mentioned it earlier, we had to prioritize on this because um, we don't know what's going on at Tetanus, we don't know if they will make it, so we have to be able to also manufacture the large scale of uh, photochemistry in-house. So this is what we have all achieved and let's go back to the remaining challenge because the topic here is the challenges and uh, one of the challenges for example is the price. This is the prices that we have been charging as photo impacts, oh, well, we haven't been there in 1989, we started in 1990, but this is the film price in absolute figures. Um, how, how a roll, this is actually a roll of FP4 from, from Hilford. It was easy for me because we're selling so, so many of them. Um, and this is the current price, 471 today. So it started at 3 euros, which was 6 Deutschmarks, and now we are at 471, and this is 20 years ago, uh, this is uh, 30 years later. And this is if you factor in 2% of inflation. So you see, today we're actually cheaper than 1989 when there was 100,000 people employed and the factories, they were like a thousand times bigger than us. And uh, this is more or less my conclusion. <laughs> I would like to be able to raise film prices a little bit I, I ask you all to pay a little bit more for film so that we can put back engineering, education of experts, building machines, acquiring new buildings back into the price of film. It's currently not in. Any film you can buy from Kodak, from Fuji, from Ilford, it's all made on machines older than 20 years, in buildings erected more than 20 years ago, made by people trained more than 20 years ago. All these normal costs that any other product has are not in film prices right now. So we need to raise prices a little bit more. I'm not saying doubling. I'm talking about 20-25% more. That's what's necessary in the next years if we want to um, accomplish this goal that we can keep on going for the next 150 years because ADOX is 150 years old. Thank you. In the market today, selling Adox around the world, how have you seen an increase in interest in black and white, in paper? Is it equal? Yeah, that's a good question. So when we, when I showed you that the, the market is, is coming back up and, and we actually have a growth again, that's only um, referring to film sales. We still are in decline in paper. And chemistry is of course connected to film, so film chemistry goes up, paper chemistry goes a little bit down. Uh, but I think this is going to change. Film is, is the first. Film is going ahead because people find cameras, maybe in a camera rescue store, and then they need film. So they start shooting the film and eventually when they have enough negatives in their stock, some of them will be interested in the wet darkroom as well because it's very interesting to go into the darkroom. It's, it's just magic in the red light, see how the image comes up. It just makes fun. Um, Any other questions? How much are, like, how far are you from color? Or at what price point could you make color? It depends. Um, about, well, we could theoretically make color film. Anyone theoretically could if he has access to the color coupling system. Huh? 
the, the, so that's the first to, to a color coupling system, or you have to synthesize it, which is extremely costly. And the second challenge is to balance the colors. It's uh, so so there is new color films on the market like the um, Lomography Purple and and these things, these experimental films. They're quite easy to make because if, if, if they shift a little bit more to purple or even a little bit to green, nobody's going to care because it's, a, it's an experimental film anyways. But if you want to do something like what's out on the market now, made by Fuji and Kodak, we're talking billions. We're talking billions of investment. No one will ever do this. These companies have to survive and they have to keep making color film if you want this level of quality. And only if you accept a lower quality, for example, there has been a project, but I think it's stalled, someone trying to make um, Kodachrome again. Kodachrome is a four, lay four or five layer film, it has 64 ASA, and the technology of the film is quite simple, but there's a lot of technology in the developer, <laughs> which makes it tricky again. So something like this would be possible. It, it would be possible to make a color film maybe half the quality of a Ferrania film, old Ferrania film. But making a real good quality color film is very challenging. If you ask in years and there's no budget limitation and I have all the people and I know how to synthesize those color couplers, four years. 200 people for four years. Expensive people. And assistants. And labs. And silver. It's possible. Who's paying? Is there something very uh, worrying in the industry right now? I really think the most worries shall be with the um, generation retiring and how to tr how to get young people excited and um, because also with young people there's a general tendency not to stick with one employer anymore for a lifetime and uh, for us we have to train an emotionist for five years and then he starts working so we pay him for five years before he actually pays us back and uh, and and I asked I had so I wrote out this 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 job for chemists and we had like 20 applications and only one of them was willing to commit that he's going to spend 10 years with us of course he can still quit uh, but at least he committed to this and I trusted him and that's because he's a passionate large format photographer and uh, that's that's why I trusted him even more and now it's working but uh, this is this is a challenge. Yeah. If the machines they can be fixed for a little longer, the buildings they can be leased a little longer. Harman can lease can I think they just re renewed their rent contract so they can go on for, for, for longer. And when the market is coming up further and we find young people and we can raise film prices by twenty percent, then it will all work out. You recently came out with the large format, again, the CHS in the 100. Is there a demand for all the sizes? Because you are cutting every size. Yes, but th this is a, we are cutting every size because this is one of the things we um, have accomplished. That we have the smallest factory and also photo impacts, the distribution is right next to it. ADOX doesn't even have a warehouse. They bring it straight over to the photo impacts warehouse so we don't have double costs. And, uh, if you call us today and you want a special size sheet film, and uh, and if nobody's sick, <laughs> we can we can put it in the production plan for the afternoon, and then they go to the cutting machine, they cut it, put it to the warehouse, we package it, and it goes out the next day. So we don't really have all these sizes in stock, but yes, we do see more interest for strange. We call, sorry, we call them strange sizes <laughs> for other sizes than four by five and eight by ten. Why is that? Because we have all these beautiful camera makers out. We, there's in China, there is 50 new large format camera makers. They make them from from wood with brass. They make them by hand, and they're all custom made. It's a little bit like the question the um, other uh, girls asked uh, about the professional uh, in film. 
And these photographers, they're not really professionals, but they're very passionate. They spend two, three, four thousand euros on cameras and lenses, and, uh, and, and they make, have them custom made for them in, in, in the format they want. And then they go out for weeks and shoot, and they spend hours in the darkroom. So they're not living of it in, uh, as a form of professionalism, but also there's uh, many wealthy people um, now in, in this world who look for for a hobby and, uh, and, and they do this kind of stuff and uh, this has really becoming a niche in the niche this, the, the large format scene with, um, with um, very large uh, films and the largest film we sold was 50 by 60 centimeters and the camera is so huge that the guy has it fixed mounted on a pickup truck and he can only take images where he can drive so then he, he tries to park as level as possible, then he levels the camera and turns it around on his pickup truck and then takes negatives this size. And he was amazed that we made it in one week. He asked Kodak for five years. <laughs> no offer. Yeah, we have to be flexible, of course. We have to listen to you, the customers, um, this is our big advantage that we have distribution and manufacturing merged. So our ear is straight um, on the tray table of the customer in the darkroom. <laughs> and then we try to make better products. Medium format then? Yeah, medium format we want to make. Yeah, It's just that uh, our pre-producer who slipped the film for us went bankrupt. <laughs> like so many others. So we had to do it ourselves. And we had to do it much sooner than we thought and we weren't ready yet. But it's coming now again. We just slid medium format two weeks ago. No more questions?